Welcome back, pet parents. So no matter how much we talk about CBD and mushrooms, people always have more questions. It's really, really exciting, but also really, really overwhelming, <laughs> which is why I'm so excited to have Sean here with me today from Earth Buddy Pets. Sean, thank you so much for being here. And um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how Earth Buddy started? Yeah, it's my favorite story to tell. So um, my background is only in pet. So I got out of college. I went to school here in Northern Colorado. I'm actually up at our facility right now in Longmont. So um, I got out of school in 2008 and my first job was with a major pet food manufacturer. Um, they're more of the science based. Um, so I've seen it all and I've done it all and I've worked with many major pet food manufacturers and distributors. And during the time of 2014 time, I watched in Colorado become the first state to make hemp legal to cultivate, grow, extract, and sell as a retail product um, for CBD purposes. And I watched that explosion happen um, both on the human and the pet side. Um, while that was happening, Coincidentally, I had adopted a 13-year-old seizure dog named Kiva, and um, I saw the products that were out there for her or available to pets, and I also simultaneously was seeing all the hype around epilepsy and CBD, and I saw the pet products, and I was like, where's this stuff from? There's only been one crop and one year of crops out there. There weren't that many farms. So where is this stuff coming from? And we saw that explosion of all these different products making wild claims and still persist today. Um, and I said, you know what? Um, you're always one degree separated from cannabis in this, in this world of Colorado. And so I had two scientists, um, both are PhDs in chemistry and biology, and they were growing some of the best cannabis in the world, in my opinion. And they had a uh, small farm. It was about, you know, 10 acres, but they only grew on about three or four. And they were growing small crop um, cannabis, mostly um, on the hemp side. So we began using those products for Kiva. And I was able to really help manage her seizures. One of the biggest things I always bring up about Kiva, though, was diet was a major influence in you know, managing her health issues, but then adding these natural remedies into her food like mushrooms and, and CBD and, you know, various other supplements. Um, we were able to really give her some quality of life and we kept her around another, you know, year and a half. So um, in that process, we said, hey, there's something here. We actually know what we're talking about with these products and we have some science um, and scientists to back up what we're saying. And so we started making products, mostly just treats, um, because we needed an edible, easy form for people to understand. But then now we've since expanded kind of and gone off the rails and done all kinds of cool stuff um, since then. But it has evolved to really our main focus is providing quality of life for pets, especially towards the end when they're seniors. Um, there's just, you know, there's so many things that are going on as they age and they age so much faster than us that we want to give them some quality of life without having these traditional pharmaceuticals with all the side effects and things. And I mean, I'm sure you've been through this too, as a pet owner. Um, the bottom line is you get to a point where your bank account's so low because you've been going in and out of the vet and you're like, you know what, I just got to give them some quality of life and be able to say goodbye as long as possible in a healthy way. So that is the focus of what we do. And I hope that wraps up my, my intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it is um, a different story than what I hear for, from a lot of companies because the quality of life is really, I think, one of the most important things that we can give our pets, no matter what is going on with them, what stage of life they're in, whether they have ailments, whether they don't have ailments, the quality of life is, is really, yeah. really important. And I don't think it's talked about enough. Um, and it's, it also is really, really interesting because my intro into 
like fresh feeding was also with a seizure dog. And I wish I had known more about hemp back then. I, I knew nothing about him. I knew nothing about nothing. Right. <laughs> I, I literally was just like adding fresh foods into her diet and seeing that once we, once I fully made the transition to fresh food, that her seizures stopped and it was incredible. And I didn't expect it. I like happened upon it, not knowing, not having read other people's stories or anything like that. And it was so incredible. So to hear like another person have a, a similar um, experience, especially when you have these other, uh, you had these other tools with, with um, hemp and mushrooms. So that's really awesome. Um, how, how wonderful it was that she came into your life. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I was talking to somebody today actually about this exact thing and what really has driven our company has been our own pets from day one and they're our best teachers. I, I talk to a lot of really smart vets, much smarter than me and, and scientists too, and mycologists and people really in the know. And the reality is, is our pets are our best teacher and they kind of guide us in this, in this journey. And ultimately we've, we've made mistakes along the way with pets and we've learned from those and we try to do better, you know, for, for even that pet and then to future pets. And, you know, it's awesome that you were able to kind of go above and beyond these traditional methods of, Hey, what, what's the pill that I got to give my pet to fix the thing. And we're so programmed to do that for ourselves. And, and, you know, we, we want to, we want to help both people and pets in that regard. Yeah, no, it is so, it's so rewarding too, when you're like, I did that, <laughs> you know? Um, so gosh, you've said so many things that I, I want to touch on. Um, and one thing, which we'll get to in just a little bit, you were talking about working with a, a mycologist. So we'll talk a little bit more about mushrooms in just a bit, but, um, I was going through the Earth Buddy website and you, I, I was actually shocked to find all of the products that you do have. There's, there's a pretty big array of products that you have. I didn't quite realize yeah. <laughs> when I <laughs> met you at SuperZoo, I was like, okay, yeah, we're, we've got CBD and mushrooms, but then you yeah. actually have like a lot going on here. Oh yeah. So. Uh, and, and I love that it's all grown in the U.S. And of course, there's, you know, the farm bill, right? That That is, for, yeah. we're fortunate enough to, to have here in the U.S. that is kind of giving us some structure with these hemp products that are coming out. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, right? <laughs> a little bit is, is better than none, which is kind of where we are with, with mushrooms right now, right? <laughs> we have like nothing going on with mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and that's great. And I was reading through kind of how you grow and that you're not, there are no pesticides and the water that gets, because it's, it's an aquaponics that uh, process for growing, right? Can you explain yeah. that a little bit better? Yeah, this is, this is the fun stuff for me to okay. talk about. So, <laughs> um, so there's an aquaponics system, meaning we just capture water that is actual glacial melt from the Rocky mountains. And we trap that into a small little pond and there's frogs, snakes, turtles, fish in that pond. And so you have like a natural ecosystem, but that water is a clean source. Um, water is hard to come by in Colorado. So, um, you know, having clean water, you know, there is fracking here in Colorado. Um, and with any, with any water source, you're going to have, um, risks in that you're going to have heavy metals, you're going to have runoff from big agriculture. Um, the really cool thing about our farms, um, you know, we've since moved our farm from Longmont to the Western Slope just because of land costs has gone through the roof as it has in every, every part of the country. But um, in the mountains, we were able to increase our, our land size, but in the mountains, um, tons of glacial melt water. So it's like the purest water form um, not grown near any big agriculture. So, you know, your typical corn, 
wheat, soy, those kind of things. And the part of the state that we're in is one of the most fertile parts of Colorado. Um, it's very well known for its um, Palisade peaches. If anybody from Colorado knows about those, they're like the best tasting peaches in the world. Um, but also they're actually growing wine on the Western Slope, or they're growing grapes, I shouldn't say wine. They're making wine from grapes grown on the Western Slope. So it's a very fertile area. And the other key component of our growing process, which is very different than from what I've experienced other companies explain is that we grow small crop cultivation. So um, this is a plant that we are growing for consumption and we are extracting from it and concentrating it. So when you grow it on a large scale, a lot of interventions have to happen to make it safe. Whereas if you grow it like a small crop, there's much less intervention that is required to concentrate the medicinal oil in those plants. So I hope that makes sense to some extent. I could, I could elaborate on that a little bit more. <laughs> so it's like, it's like ma you're making things in small batches, kind of. It's a really simple way to say it. And, and yes, <laughs> but like, you know, the typical, um, what happened with hemp? In, in general in the country is it's been commoditized because there was a gold rush for it. Um, and we really wanted to avoid that and speak to the fact that we're treating this like um, horticulture as opposed to big agriculture. There's a very big difference in those, those processes and we don't use like huge farming equipment. We don't use chemical extraction processes. We still have people come out and hand trim our plants like a smokable hemp product or a cannabis product on the marijuana side, um, which is very different than anything in terms of detail that I can hear from other, other companies out there. Okay. And this is, um, a full spectrum product. Always. Yes. So, yes. Okay. you know, I, I like the, the terminology is kind of crazy right now. Um, and it always has been, um, I will just say unequivocally, all of it is marketing. And there's nothing new under the sun in cannabis, like people have done it and then they just call it something else and it just gets accepted. But the, the general way we describe full spectrum is we're not removing any of the compounds. Um, we're trying to keep it as close to what it was as a plant as it, you know, in our finished products. So um, the plant produces hundreds of compounds and they dictate flavor, smell, but also the medicinal value um, so with that, we're not going to go, um, partially extract that and manipulate those compounds in the, in the plant. So there's, there's plenty of, um, methods to do this, but we use the safest methods. One of which is called CO2 extraction, which is just pressure and temperature. And you're basically just, um, you know, for lack of a, to kind of simplify it is we're basically using pressure to kind of squeeze that medicinal oil out of the plant. Okay. So, you know, obviously how it's grown and how it's extracted is very, very important to the quality of the product. What kind of things are you seeing? Like what, what improvements are you seeing in animals who are using who get to use these uh, hemp products? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, the thing is, is like, we really stress that every pet is different. And there's not a one size fits all. There's been some good studies come out um, in clinical usage. And often those dosages are extremely high. Where we take a different approach is we kind of look at it as like, we want minimal effective dose. So um, we're not trying to say you have to use these extremely high doses to get the, um, desired response. We're saying, um, there's a bunch of things we can address with this. And so we're going to start low and go slow. For instance, the biggest one is calming. Sorry, <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> I'm in my front office of my building. So, um, we're going to have people coming in and out. Um, no, but the, the main thing is stress and, and dealing with calming. So, um, that's the easiest one, um, that people usually go to this category for, but then there's a million other things that we can talk about in terms of what 
cannabis or hemp specifically produces not just CBD, but other cannabinoids. There's a raw form that we can use that is a little bit more um, higher absorbability for um, things like pain and joint issues. And then that's probably the second biggest reason people come to this. And what we've done to kind of expand this conversation, and I really can't stress this enough, is um, one cannabinoid is not like a fix all for everything. And I see this very often where we say, you know, you see marketing that says, you know, this is going to do all these things, but they're like wildly different. Like it's like seizures, cancer. CBD has been really well researched for a lot of these things, but the reality is, is um, there's other parts of the plant and other cannabinoids and other extracts from the plant that we can use that are much more effective or maybe a little bit more specific to that issue. So I hope that answers that question in a very long winded way. Yeah. I mean, I think there are so many things that it, it can help. Like you were saying, um, uh, but yeah, calming is one. And I, I, kind of go back to something you said earlier, where there are like tons of really wild claims being made about, you know, CBD in general, whether we're talking humans or pets, but, um, and to be like really, really candid, I think a lot of pet parents will use a product and not see results or not see the results they were expecting and get really frustrated by it. Um, maybe think that CBD doesn't work for anything or, yeah. you know, and, and it could, could it be the product they used? Absolutely. Could it be the dosing they used? Yeah. Absolutely. Like, could it be that, um, because from my understanding, the, you know, there's no testing for the endocannabinoid system, like where the deficiencies lie. So, and, and for how much to dose, like you were saying, start small and, and see what, what your pet yeah. needs. Um, can I speak and, to that a little bit? Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. So, um, there's, there's a really simple way we look at the endocannabinoid system. Everybody is different. And, um, what happens is we all have different stress in our lives, whether it's internal, external, emotional, physical. Um, so everybody is going to be different. You know, me personally, I don't tolerate THC very well. Like I own a cannabis company for pets and um, I'm a very big lightweight, like, you know, even if somebody smokes near me. Um, so I have a different system. Other people in Colorado can smoke weed all day and be fully functional, <laughs> which is really scary. But um, the same goes for our pets. So when we look at pets, um, they're different sizes, they're different breeds, they have different traumas, like just like us. So saying that, you know, our one dose is going to fix all these issues. It's like, no, nope, we're saying here's a good starting point. We're not saying it's gospel. Um, the problem that happens, and I think a lot of times we took the drug pharmaceutical mentality when this, these products launched and what happened was, you know, you have one person that has a, has, you know, a 40 pound dog, they take one treat and, you know, their dog totally chills out. First time they use it, they swear by that product, that same size dog of a friend that they tell about it is way higher energy, way higher stress. And they do the same thing and they're like, that stuff didn't work. And they're expecting magic out of that first time they give a product, especially an edible or even something that they have to ingest. Um, it's really difficult because every pet metabolizes things different too. So broad stroking it and saying that, you know, somebody's CBD is more CBD -er is a really silly way to think of this. What, what we did is we've always said, start low, go slow, give us a couple weeks. And over time, what you're doing is you're engaging that cannabinoid system to help balance these mood chemicals in our body. Specifically, CBD is shown to help with kind of serotonin levels and modulating them, which is 100% our mood. Um, that's why we have a lot of gut health products, because, you know, where is our serotonin made? Mostly in our gut and same with our pets. So that chemical is really important. 
to be happy and to modulate, you know, these mood swings that we may have, especially if you have a stressed pet. So what we're saying is give us consistency at a moderate dose. So you're not having to use a ton. And a lot of people took the other approach of like, we want to, you know, more is better. So um, we really try to steer people away from that and say, start low, go slow, and you can always increase or decrease as needed. Um, we did a study just recently, and this is why I wanted to kind of pick at this a little bit, is we did a study last year during July, which is the most stressful time of year for pets. Um, and we saw, it was a survey study. So this is an at-home study. This isn't like clinical, we weren't doing blood levels, but the reality is what we wanted to see is a user-driven data um, as opposed to marketing. So what we did is we had 70 pets, mostly dogs, um, use our product for a 21 day span. Through that 21 day span, we saw unequivocally a 30% decrease in stress in pets during that time. That was because they use a low to moderate dose daily. And to me, if you have a pet that's on level 9,000 all the time or revving at like 5,000 RPMs, um, that 30% decrease is very significant. So as opposed to saying, hey, I gave it to them one time and they chilled out, we have that all the time, but it's just not realistic to say every pet is gonna have that experience. Yeah, and I think um, just to kind of throw in a little, a little side note about that. The first time I started taking um, a full spectrum hemp extract myself, the very first day I took it, I was tired and sluggish. And then um, I, but I just kept taking it. And by yeah. literally by the second day, I was like, okay, <laughs> I, I wasn't tired anymore. Like I, I like, like my body just had to like, okay, this is new. And yeah. <laughs> so well, you're, you're engaging your cannabinoid system and that system is a chemical modulator of every system in our body. So the cannabinoid system isn't necessarily doing anything specific. The way we explain it is it's like a uh, conductor of an orchestra. They're not playing an instrument, but they're conducting the flow of that entire system to make it harmonious. And you hear the words homeostasis and balance and things like that. And those are kind of vague. So we always try to like compare it to a symphony. And it's like your endocannabinoid system literally manages all these different functions. So maybe what's happening a lot of times with like your situation is like your endocannabinoid system is reacting to it. Some cases it overreacts and then that product gets deemed, you know, oh, it didn't work. It actually made my pet crazy. There's other conversations within that I would have, but the reality is, is you're, you're engaging that system with a plant extract and everybody's going to respond differently. In your case, it sounds like your, your system kind of acclimated after a day or two. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I like that the analogy of the, the orchestra that makes so much sense to me. So thank you yeah. for that. And um, that's why I, that's why so many people have so many different responses, especially with pets. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So I I want to talk about mushrooms, but but really quick before we do, there were two products, your specific products that I wanted to ask you about. Yeah. The quick calm, that is different to me. Yeah. So Tell me I'll about just. That. Yeah. Um, so this goes right back into, you know, how products work. Right. So one of the things, cause we were one of the first like American grown CBD brands in Colorado. So technically one of the first in the country that was growing Colorado grown, some of the first crops, but what was happening is the main question we got is how long before it works. Well, work is relative to what the issue you're using it for. So it was becoming pretty difficult. Primarily why, what people were asking is how long before it chills my crazy dog out or cat for that matter. And so we we're not going to just simply answer that because it's just so hard to say for each pet how this is going to work. So what we said is how do we make something that is a little bit more um, faster absorbed into the bloodstream and you know, having a PhD in chemistry um, on hand and in the lab behind me, um, I said, what can we do? And I said, can we take this product and somehow make it more absorbable or faster absorbed? So maybe it kicks in a little bit quicker, whether they eat or not, because 
the whole food without food thing we can talk about. But um, what we did with QuickCom is we basically just take our full spectrum extract and we emulsify it. The really fancy way of saying we blend it so small that it can mix in water. So we put that um, emulsified extract into distilled water. So now it's in distilled water. So when you squirt it, it's a little squirt bottle. Um, when you squirt it in the mouth, it absorbs mucosally. And then it also peaks the blood level really fast. So it gets into the bloodstream really quick. Marketing, we'll call it nano. We don't use that term. We just say, this is how we process it. We emulsify it. We're not saying nano. Nano is an actual measurement size of a part of like a molecule. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of companies will say nanotechnology or whatever, but we don't go that route. We just say, hey, we do this rapid emulsion technology that um, peaks the blood level faster with CBD. And the hope is that it kicks in faster regardless. Now, if you want to know the the like the personal reason why we created that product was um, I had my first dog, Kiva, that I was telling you about, I can see her symptoms coming on. So she would pant, breathe uh, really heavy and start huffing and puffing. And then she would seize and, and kind of go out um, and convulse. Um, she wasn't going to take an oil or a cookie when she was going through those symptoms. Um, if your dog is super stressed and they're on level 9,000, they're probably not going to take our yummy treats or our oil or any product for that matter. So how do we expect to get it in their body? Well, we created not only a delivery device, but also a formulation that regardless if they want it or not, you can squirt it in their mouth and hopefully peak their blood level a little bit quicker to kind of reduce some of that stress involved with any scenario. Um, what we've heard since then, and it's become one of our best sellers for this reason, is um, people don't leave home without it, especially with travel, because they're like, yeah, my dog hates the car and I can't get him to eat anything, let alone an, a little dropper of oil, um, but I can take yours and I can squirt it in their mouth. And it doesn't make a sound, so it's not like a spritz that makes that little sound that mm -hmm. might scare a cat or a dog. Um, but you know, it's not the best tasting. It's not really made for that, but we made that product with, you know, my personal situation in mind. Um, I now have a dog who has grand mal seizures. As you can tell, I love these problem children, but, um, you know, with any kind of stress, we want to be able to kind of jump on it right away. And quick calm was like an answer to the, how long before it works? It's like, well, we don't know, but here's a way to get it in their bloodstream a little bit quicker. Okay. That makes so much sense. And, um, it, it's definitely like I saw it and I was like, um, I'm trying that. So I wanted to <laughs> ask about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and then you brought up gut health, which I think is something that most people don't equate CBD with gut health. And I find that to be like, I understand where people are coming from, not like thinking about the two together, especially with a lot of brands out there saying like, no, don't feed, like it doesn't work as well if you feed it, yada, yada, which, okay, maybe. But I, I do see where if you do have a dog that has gut issues, that there could be some benefit through feeding it or, you know, through incorporating it in food. And so I, when I saw that you have a colostrum supplement. Um, first of all, my question like with colostrum are always about, um, you know, the ethics of, yeah. of, of, of sourcing the colostrum. Um, cause I saw that, you know, they're obviously well cared for cows. Yeah. Um, so sourcing is like my main concern when I see colostrum, but tell me a little bit about like, the idea behind the science behind using a CBD in combination with a colostrum, I think yes. especially for dogs that have gut issues like that could be pretty big. This is, yeah, this is my favorite topic because, you know, just back up a second, take Earth Buddy out of this. Um, our health is rooted in our gut. And when you think about pets, it's even more important because we can see visible and tangible evidence of how their gut is doing, both in their coat their skin health, their teeth, their breath, their, uh, their poop, obviously the back end of this situation. Um, and then ultimately their behavior. Um, so, 
you're a trainer, correct? Like you, <laughs> yeah. you could probably identify this better than me in most cases. But what I was starting to see is like, okay, there's a million things we can do for the gut. And what I noticed is there's really nothing kind of balancing um, good and bad bacteria in the gut. There's probiotics where you're just flooding the system with um, bacteria, good bacteria in this case, but you're flooding it with it and crossing your fingers and like, oh my gosh, I hope it works. I've heard 50-50 on most probiotics, in my opinion. Um, I, they're very expensive and some work and some don't. Um, and some work for some people and some don't work for some people. So it's, it's wide ranging. So gut health products are like all over the place. And when we looked at from the cannabis perspective, we looked at, okay, let's go back to uh, endocannabinoid stuff. Um, there's receptors all over our bodies that are part of this cannabinoid system in mammals' bodies. Where are the most concentration of them? Well, the CB2 receptors are predominantly concentrated in our gut. So when we looked at that and we hear, you know, marketing that says, you know, it, you're going to waste it, you're not going to absorb it correctly. We don't look at absorption of a cannabinoid in a cannabis plant the same way as a lot of the companies that I've heard say this. We look at it as as soon as it hits your mouth or even your skin, there is a benefit and an engagement into those receptors in our bodies. Specifically, when we're talking about gut health, there's all these receptors in our gut. So once we swallow it and once we ingest this, um, we are engaging those receptors, regardless if it goes through the full process or not. There's an engagement that happens with an extract of a plant um, that's specifically designed to you know, have a key and lock system with these receptors. So for us, it was a no brainer because when you look at gut um, inflammation, most times if there's an issue with stool quality, skin and coat, breath, all the things I, I listed off, um, there's an inflammatory response happening in the gut. So why not have something that has shown profound benefits on you know, reducing these inflammatory responses like CBD. Specifically, the one that we're using is the purest form of uh, a hemp extract that we can possibly use. So I'll get to the colostrum in a second, but I just, I want to point out like what we're using for that is a, you know, a really hippie way to explain it is it's um, a hash form of a uh, hemp extract that is high in CBD from our plants that we grow on our farm. Um, but basically it's called Keef. And keef is basically just a really simple way is we're just drying off the medicinal um, trichomes off the plant. So if you ever zoomed in on a bud of cannabis, there's all those little crystals on there. I don't know if this is losing you, but it, it, it doesn't. It, the bottom line is there's all these there's all these little crystals on the plant, and that is where all the medicinal oil is. Basically, all we're doing is, for lack of a better term, freeze drying that off the plant. There's no extraction process, and what we do is we mix that with our colostrum. And so, from our standpoint, that I mean that product has been around for quite some time now, over five years, and we continue to get profound responses from pet parents that are cannot figure it out having constant allergies to food you know dietary sensitivity and then environmental too we get so much good feedback on that product and then you know um there's a lot of pets out there that you know pet parents can't figure anything out and we usually can get them on that a lot of pets come up from uh the reservations down in new mexico and the southwest and they're full of giardia and, you know, their guts all out of crate, out of whack or, you know, pets coming off of antibiotics wrecks their gut microbiome. This, this product I think is a very comprehensive product for a lot of digestive issues. So when we looked at it, we said, well, the research shows there's a ton of receptors in our, in our bodies and our pets bodies specifically cats, even more so from what the, what the research says. 
Um, if we can get this in their body, that's always the trick, right? Um, this is a really phenomenal product for almost any pet. Um, and we typically push a lot of the regular extracts and things towards, you know, aging pets or pets just that are adult age. But this is one of the few products that we're like, hey, this is pretty much for anyone. And you can be very, very low with the dosing and you're going to continually see improvement in digestion, which then translates into the other stuff we talked about. Wow. Yes. I, I was, when I saw that, I was like, it's so interested. And other than, I mean, I, it's got what organic blueberry. Yeah. Blue we do some berry powder to sweeten powder. it up. Because, yeah, it is. It is pretty hempy because we are using okay. like a very pure source of, we're just using pure plant. And when you have a stinky, you know, funky product like hemp that has like a strong smell, we have to kind of sweeten it up or, um, you know, for, for any way we can make it more palatable. The colostrum does a lot of the heavy lifting in that product because it is funky. Mm -hmm. um, it smells very um, Parmesan cheesy is what I would say. And then, uh, you know, the blueberry powder was just another added benefit of one, sweetening up, maybe reducing some of that smell, but also it provides some antioxidants, which blueberries are phenomenal. And anytime we can get them in our pet's diet, we want to. So. Um, but yeah, on the colostrum side, um, you were asking about kind of like quality and sourcing and things along that lines. Is it okay if I yeah, go into that please. a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we source um, from Canadian um, GMO free fed cows. Um, you know, they specialize in um, this colostrum that is captured within the first 48 hours. I think it's like 36 to 24. Mm -hmm typically, because that is when the most potent form of the colostrum is used. Um, we use a 14% IgG, and I'll get into what that is in a second. But basically, the, the mother cow produces quite a bit extra than the calf can actually produce. So we're not robbing cows of milk. Um, and, you know, there's all this excess and not many people are crazy about drinking raw, um, you know, whole colostrum maybe the regular milk i'm all about raw milk for you know my pets and my kids and myself but um for colostrum it's definitely a different kind of milk that isn't as desired in its raw form so um, basically they spray dry it and then they preserve what is called immunoglobulins and this is the value of colostrum um, i think what we saw is there's a lot of colostrum in products, but they don't actually give you a level of what these immunoglobulins are. And all that is, um, the IgG for abbreviation purposes, um, is it balances good and bad bacteria. So as opposed to flooding the system with a probiotic, a certain bacteria strain, or prebiotics, which are encouraging your natural production of good bacteria and bad bacteria, um, immunoglobulins balance good and bad in the microbiome, which I think is important because sometimes you can have more of one or the other and your system's all out of whack. It doesn't matter. So you really want that, you know, homeostasis or balance that we always talk about. And with the colostrum that we use, it's really high quality and they're Canadian cows. So they're treated a little bit more from a fair perspective than our traditional dairy practices here in the U.S. If we can shift gears a little bit into the mushroom products. Yes. So right now um, on your website, I'm seeing the powdered and you're going to be coming out with tinctures soon. Is that what I understand? Our tinctures and our powders and our capsules are oh. all available now. So oh, they are. Okay. Yeah. So we, we were always using mushrooms um, with conjunction of our keef and our CBD in a capsule form because we wanted precise dosing. Um, we wanted to expand on that and not have the hurdle of pet parents going, well, you have mushrooms and CBD. What the heck? That's a lot of stuff going on there. So what we did is we wanted to create some mushroom specific products and a couple different varieties to administer. So we make it easy for maybe some pickier eaters. And then we have a more concentrated form in the powder. So, um, yeah, mushrooms are a fun topic and very relative in a lot of ways to cannabis. Yeah, I think um, 
I, honestly, I'm still wrapping my head around them. Like I get, I totally get the idea that mushrooms are incredible for us and for our pets. Not necessarily all of them. Obviously, we don't want to like just go walking through the forest and eat whatever right. mushrooms we find, right? Um, but certain mushrooms have, and and different mushrooms have different properties that um, can help different situations in the body. And figuring all of that out is like makes my head just kind of want to want to explode a little bit. Yep. But. Um, so you're putting packages together, basically, that are like, yeah. well, we're putting these things together because they work synergistically. And can you explain a little bit of how that, how, how you get, get to that? Yeah, much like, and, I, and I'll go back to kind of the, the cannabis side first, because it's relative. So much like cannabis, there's all these different compounds that happen in the plant and we grow different seed varieties. So we grow plants that are high in CBG and we can grow different cannabinoids that people really don't know what they do yet, or there's very little research on. Um, but we can grow these different plant varieties. And what we found is yes, there's some cannabinoids that work better for certain things. So we created different formulations with not just CBD in it or not a high amount of CBD, but maybe something higher in CBG. So when we look at mushrooms, um, it's even broader in terms of species and then strains within those species. So um, I can show you a couple of mushrooms here in a second that I'll show you the difference. But, you know, in terms of what each species does, it's so vast and it's so many different compounds within the mushroom that we have to be... Um, very, very like broad spectrum in terms of like, what are we addressing and what are we trying to accomplish with the product? You know, there's a lot of singular mushroom products out there that I love that are specifically for one thing. Um, when we did ours, to your point, we wanted to create a comprehensive product that is really going to engage the immune system and help modulate it, but also, um, help specifically when you're talking about immune function with like allergies and then, you know, compromised immune systems, which would be more of like the end of life stuff. So um, again, mushrooms are very different than cannabis though, where they are not necessarily engaging our receptors in our body and right away showing this like significant reduction in stress or things like that. But over time, the cumulative effect that I see with mushrooms is much more profound than even cannabis in some ways. Oh, wow. Okay. And cause I think if I understand, there's like a, a huge difference in you've got, of course you've got your like toxic mushrooms, you've got culinary yeah. mushrooms, but then there's like, um, like a functional food aspect to mushrooms. And then there's like the, you know, the extracts that are more like, quote, medicinal, though you don't yes. necessarily want to say that for F the FDA or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's it, I can give you just kind of a breakdown. Yes. So every mushroom that we're using is more of the gourmet variety or um, functional food variety. Most of the mushrooms we use are used by many cultures as uh, meat replacements. So, for instance, lion's mane is widely used as a meat replacement for a lot of vegetarian diets. Um, and most of these mushrooms, when you get them whole and you harvest them, you can season them how you like, and they will taste just as good as a lot of, uh, or if not mostly better than most meat replacements that I've seen out there that are full of junk and preservatives and God knows what. So mushrooms are phenomenal just from like a food standpoint, but they also have these compounds. Each mushroom has hundreds of compounds. Um, and so what we do with our mushroom extracts, um, they're all extracted. And these are some things that I would look out for with any mushroom product is, um, is it an extract or is it a spray dried powder um, or just, you know, a spray dried um, mycelium powder? Um, because we really want to harness and concentrate those beneficial compounds. Some of the, some of the powders, in my opinion, are still great. But if we're really trying to get a 
a quantifiable level of beneficial compounds, which is really hard to do right now in mushrooms. Um, we got to have some kind of measure to do that. And so extracting it and then testing um, what is called beta glucans, which are one of hundreds of compounds that these mushrooms produce is really the standard right now that is becoming more known. Um, however, this is something that earth buddy and, you know, our supplier who's right down the road actually from us and their, their organic mushroom farm. Um, there's so much more to each species and each, um, it's called phenotype. There's different, you know, there's different reishi, there's different, um, forms of cordyceps. So knowing what those different strains and, and species create, we can really speak to that. And our third party lab here in Colorado, we're going to start really promoting that. Hey, yes, we have beta glucan levels tested by a third party lab, but we're going to start expanding that conversation and go much beyond beta glucans. We really need to talk about all the species and what compounds they're producing. So we'll have some cool stuff to talk about um, down the road here in the next month or so. Oh, wow. Okay. That's really awesome. And I, I like that. So there are, everything you use is grown in Colorado. Yes. So, um, we use a USDA organic facility here. Um, all the mushrooms are grown on organic millet, um, traditional substrates or food source for the mushrooms has been myceliated brown rice, which we don't have as much of a problem, but I understand the pushback that, um, I've heard on that. Um, the reality is, is the research shows that once a uh, mycelium is completely consuming that food source, that mycelium itself can create immune benefiting um, properties. But ultimately, the fruit body is where we're getting a lot of these really potent compounds. And there's so much just like cannabis. Again, it's very relative. These mushrooms have terpenoids which are going to be a flavor and aroma profile, but also have shown profound benefits on all kinds of stuff in terms of skin irritation, um, our histamine levels, all those different things. So there's a lot of research that needs to be done and there's more and more coming out every day and it's super exciting. There's tons of resources on this though. And um, we don't try to just focus on one ingredient in a mushroom. We really try to use that full spectrum idea of saying, Hey, there's a ton of stuff in these things. And we want to give you kind of maximum extract concentrated amount in a couple different varieties and say, Hey, if your pet's going through a lot, you know, they're overweight, they're, you know, dealing with seasonal allergies, they have some gut issues. It's like, how many things can we tackle here? we're going to do our best to give you a, a kind of full spectrum product that is going to have a lot of different compounds and yes, have that synergistic effect and cumulative effect that you can give them daily. Oh, okay. So there's nice. a lot here, but, and I'm sure you could probably talk for days on oh um, both CBD <laughs> and, and, and mushrooms. But um, yeah, I mean, super impressed with, all of all of the products and again th thank you for answering my questions on the the two products that i was like they seemed the most different to me and i really wanted yeah. to you know ask about the the quick calm and the and the and the colostrum but there's so much more here that I, you know again we could probably talk forever but where can people find the products can they follow you yeah. where what socials are you on tell me all that yeah, we're at earthbuddypet.com. That's the best place to find information. We have tons of resources on there. We, you know, we cite research studies that we use to kind of help formulate these products. Um, there's tons of resources there that they can find. And then obviously the products, um, we have a pretty vast variety that we kind of scratch the surface on, but um, we try to address everything from a natural remedy standpoint and saying, you know, um, we don't want to be a pharmaceutical. We want to give you some natural options, um, especially when things start getting really expensive. And then as for like socials at Earth Buddy Pet on everything, YouTube, we have a ton of good videos on how to mix stuff and food and stuff like that. Um, and then, yeah, Earth Buddy Pet at uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. Awesome. And all of that will be linked in the show notes. So um, this is you're just direct to consumer, correct? Like 
We're direct to consumer and in local pet stores. We have a store locator that okay. they can find on our webpage. Um, I did want to awesome. show you a couple of mushrooms that we have. Yeah, these are do that. Berichi. So these are two different species. So this is the tr traditional one that everybody sees um, in most things um, and on the sides of trees and stuff when you're walking through the wild after it rains. But then this is a really interesting phenotype called deer antler rishi, um, which is also used in our product. Um, very different complexity of compounds and um, really unique just to kind of point out the differences in, in the two different varieties. Yeah, they look very, I would not have assumed they were the same um, at all. <laughs> so, very, very different. Um, but yes, and I think, uh, you know, I, I was talking to Dr. Dr. Silver and I asked him, it was, I think it was, oh, Neil deGrasse Tyson said that, um, uh, mushrooms are closer to humans than they are to uh, plants. So, mm -hmm. and I, and I think that I, I mean, to me, that makes sense as to how they would be so beneficial yep. for us. It's incredible how packed with different compounds. I mean, they have a full spectrum of vitamin D in them. Um, you know, they, they, they absorb, uh, you know, vitamin D just like us, you know, through the sun and, you know, it just, they require light. Um, some require less light, you know, it's, it's very interesting how intuitive they are and then how important they are for ecosystems, just from the mycelial standpoint in keeping the health of the soil, you know, on our farm, you can pull up dirt and you can see mycelium in the dirt. It's really incredible, um, how important mushrooms are in our soil and growing our food. So, uh, are you, are, do you have videos of that on your channels or anything? I probably have a picture of me just holding a piece of dirt, showing the little threads of mycelium in the dirt. I have to dig that up, but I don't, I don't know if I have any video. I might have some dug up. I can dig up somewhere, but I would, yeah, that's pretty interesting to share. But if you go out yeah. to your, you know, your garden or something, if you see these little white strands kind of running through, that's mycelium. And, you know, especially after a good rain here in Colorado, you see a lot of mushrooms pop up and usually a good indicator that your soil is pretty fertile, um, that mycelium helps the health of the soil and has a ton of benefits to that. And uh, not meaning those mushrooms are always edible. That's always important. These wild mushrooms, you really got to know your stuff. But in terms of what we do, yeah, it's a very controlled environment. Mm, send some of that rain down here to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't gotten any in a long time. Oh, no. Yeah, it's been the complete opposite for us. We're usually pretty deserty here as well, but um, it's been it's been quite uh, ridden with moisture. And we have a huge morel season here in Colorado that people like love uh, going out and picking. Okay, cool. Well, um, before I let you go, if you don't mind, uh, one more question. And yeah. I normally try to ask something like, I don't know, personal, but you mentioned at the beginning that you started out at a big pet food company. So um, could you, if you could, like from that experience working at a big, big, in big pet food, if you could only give like one little like whisper in somebody's ear about pet food, what would it be? Um, you know, that's a great question. And I have kind of a thing I used to say, and I'll try to be nicer about it. Um, I think kibble is convenience. And I understand that. And I'm not one of these people who beat people up for it. But when their pets are kind of going through all these issues, it's like, hey, there's a there's a really consistent factor here. And it's one thing, it's their diet. That's what's going in their body every day. And when you think about that and you think about the extreme processes of these um, major uh, highly refined foods are, it makes sense why I'm doing what I'm doing now, which is like getting out of the way of nature and just saying, hey, we can make these products really good and keep them at as close to what they are as possible. Um, when you look at pet food, they're taking the opposite approach of like, how do we maximize profits? make the most refined, purest, you know, chemically derived forms of these ingredients that your pet needs and then cook them to death and then put them in a potato chip basically. So 
I, that's a long winded answer, but I'm like, you're, you're, you're putting a lot of pressure on that pet's poor little digestive system that moves very fast. And if you can avoid that at all costs, or at least incorporate more whole foods into their diet, you're going to see the benefits of that and how well they respond. And that's exactly what we do at Earth Buddy. But from a big manufacturing standpoint, it just gets to the point where it's all commodity based. And that's why I do what I do now, because it's just such a different take on it. Um, when you see commodity driven businesses, um, you know, health kind of goes out the window and profits and marketing is really the focus. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's a great uh, point to end on. And thank you so much for everything that you're doing and the products that you're providing for our pets. I'm very, very interested in trying some out. So um, I will be posting about those on socials when I do. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I just thank you so much for being here and uh, I appreciate you. Yes. Thank you for having me. And I appreciate it. You have awesome questions and, uh, I love going into the weeds on some of this stuff, you know, no pun yeah. intended, but, um, no. <laughs> right? fun for me. and if you can tell, like I, I nerd out pretty hard. So thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training the furry family coach just go to the furry family coach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only seven dollars that's the furry family coach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only seven dollars i can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside oh, oh.